Hey everyone, thank you so much for being here today. My name is Denise. I'm also known as Hey Wig Sister on Instagram and Facebook. Today I'm here to bring you a wig review. I'm here to show you Beltress Clover in the color Brown Sugar Sweet Cream. What a beautiful color. I have been dying to see this color for a while. So if you want to know more about Clover or Brown Sugar Sweet Cream, stick around for the rest of this video and we'll talk all about it. I was able to get this wig on trade with a wig sister. I had traded, um, I don't remember what I traded for it, but she had asked if I would be interested in doing a trade because she had never seen me review this wig or this color, and it didn't work for her, and I have wanted to see this color for such a long time. I thought, why not? This is such a good opportunity to bring you guys another great review. So let's take a look at Clover from all sides. I will show you Clover. I'll, I'll talk all about her. I'll show you inside the cap. We'll get outside and see this color outside as well. So you'll get to learn a lot in a short period of time. Let's look at Clover from all sides. So Clover is a really short, interesting haircut. I watched Taz's video on this. I am always curious on another person's take on a wig and to see when I go and review the wig, do I see the same things? One of the things she talked about in her review was the uniqueness of this cut. And really, I think she's right. There are some unique features to this cut that you don't see in a lot of cuts. First of all, the front is so polished and professional and um, kind of rounded and smooth and looks really, really beautiful. And then you go to the back and you see a little edge to it. You've got the spiky, choppy edginess of the back. And so you've got a couple of different things going on, which I think can make this a really, really fun style. And it's quite short. I would say the back is very, very short. Let's get closer so you can see that. And so I would warn you, if you have a low hairline, especially in the back, be cautious. This is a very short wig, and I, sh I buzz my hair, and I sh actually shave my neck a little bit. With the clippers, I use no guard on it, and that really helps me to be able to wear these shorter styles without seeing any of my bio hair. If I hadn't done that, though, you would actually be able to see a little bit of my bio hair peeking out on the bottom. So keep that in mind. Really short, short nape. Otherwise, it's really um, got lots of good coverage on the sides, and it's not super asymmetrical A-line, and I know that can be a frustration sometimes for my wig sisters who want these shorter styles, but then you find that they're so trendy in the front and have so much of an A-line like a John, like a John Renault Ignite is one I can think of, that it's you don't like that trendiness. So this one definitely doesn't do that. It has a lot of great lift on the top with just a tiny bit of permatease up here to give it lift. This is not a heavy permatease wig at all. Belle Tress is known for either being very light with the permatease or having no permatease. I would say there's just a tiny bit up here to give it just a little bit of that lift on the top, but it is not heavy handed at all. What they've achieved with lift is really skillful cutting of hair. You know, you've got a lot of really shorter layers on the top. There's just a lot of layers going on on this piece. Um, the color. I usually try to talk about the color before I get into the wig. This color, Brown Sugar Sweet Cream, is so pretty. I will get outside for you so you can see this color outside. It is a lot lighter than I expected it to be, though. A lot blonder. So you've got a little bit of a dark root. And that's a, it's a fairly dark root. And then you've got a very warm, light, kind of caramely color all throughout. It's very warm and quite light. So if you are a brunette who struggles with light, 
browns or high, heavily highlighted browns with lots of blonde highlights. This one is quite light. It's a lot lighter than I really expected it to be. So um, keep that in mind. I will get this outside so that you can see it outside. They put a lot of that light right up at the front as well, just like Raquel Welch does, and it's pretty stark. Next to this dark root, the lightness up here is very blonde and very stark. This lace front is really good. Uh, Beltress has improved their lace fronts exponentially since I started wearing wigs. You really cannot see the knotting on this. But there's so, I almost think they did too much lightness with the dark. So it's really obvious right there. So that might be something that could be a challenge for some of you with how light that front is. And it definitely wants to lift up. It has quite the lift in the front. I have spent quite a bit of time playing with this, trying to figure out how to get it to lay in a way that I think is most flattering for me. The front really wants to lift up a lot. I mean, I've done okay with pulling it down a little bit, but it definitely wants to lift up. The problem is if you want a full bang, you can get a full bang with just a little bit of trimming. It's just a little bit too long to be a full bang on me, but there's so much lift in the front there that I think if you wanted a full bang and to lay flat, you're going to need to take some heat to it to flatten out that front. This is a heat friendly piece, so you are able to take heat to it comfortably, so you can do that. And I would tell you, with a wig this length, do not be afraid of heat friendly. This wig is going to last a really long time. I don't think you're going to see a lot of detrimental impact from it being heat friendly. If anything, it looks way more realistic in my opinion and feels way more realistic. I love the feel of Bell Tress Heat Friendly Fibers. They are phenomenal. They really are. They feel amazing. You're not going to get the wear and tear on a short wig like this. That is what is the enemy of a heat friendly piece is that friction. You're really not going to get that. I think that you'll just get a lot of realism. It'll feel great and heat friendly are less shiny than regular synthetic. So it'll reflect the light around you depending on where you are a lot less. So I would definitely not be afraid. It has a mono part so you can part it. You've got that lace front. You have ear tabs with lots and lots of hair sewn in, so you've got that great coverage from all that hair. You do not have an extended nape, and you've got the pull strap adjusters. This cap does not fit me as big as some other bell tress wigs typically fit me. I would say this is not um, kind of an average large. I have gotten some bell tress wigs that fit me so big that I struggle to wear them comfortably. Uh, this one does not do that. I don't have any extra cap. It's very, very, it's not, it's like, it's like perfect fit for me. It's not, I want to say it's snug, but only because I'm used to wigs that are loose because I do have such petite over the top of my head measurements. So I would say for it being kind of big head friendly, like you're used to Bell Trust being, I'm not finding that in this cap at all. I really am finding this to be true to average. I think an average petite even might be able to wear this one because it does fit a little bit smaller. The coverage is really good. I get really excellent coverage and a lot of that is all that hair sewn in on the ear tab and the ear tabs do fall a little bit below and in front of my ears which gives me awesome coverage and awesome security but it makes wearing glasses a little bit challenging because it is does I don't really get any clearance between the ear tabs and my ears so if you are a glasses wearer and your head measurements are similar to mine you might struggle with glasses a little bit with this one for long periods of time because of that coverage. And that's one of the trade-offs I think we make with wigs. You get great coverage with wigs, some wigs, and then it's less comfortable with glasses and hearing aids and things like that. You get worse coverage with wigs, and then maybe you can wear glasses and hearing aids more comfortably. So those are the trade-offs that we have to wrestle with when it comes to wig wearing. Um, otherwise, I mean, it's definitely, definitely for someone who likes short, layered styles it's so adorable and it's 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 rounded enough that it's not i wouldn't consider this a spiky except for in the back obviously like a spiky short style i do think if you put product in it um peace out cream uh Tressilor wig wax which i am going to be reviewing here shortly i think you can do some fun messy looks with this one 
I have to duck down when I get closer because otherwise I'm too tall for the camera. Um, but I don't think you're going to get a ton of different looks out of this one. I do think you can tuck uh, if your coverage is like me with just a little bit of effort. But it tucks well. I think you can use clips and like clip the front up to get yourself just a little bit of a different look everywhere else. You can put a few clips in strategically. I think you can wear a headband. You know, your typical things that you can do with short wigs. So, Clover. I mean, I do think she's adorable. I think she is full on the top. And so if you're looking for a super flat, low density wig, I'm not really thinking Clover is super low density. It feels moderate density to me and it feels like it has a good amount of hair on the top with a lot of thinning having happened in the back. So like low density, flat in the back with more going on in the front. That's my take on Clover. Let's go outside so you can see this color outside. And if you have questions for me about Clover, please leave them in the comments. And if you've got Clover, share your experience with Clover and what you think of this piece. So let's go look at this color outside now. Hey everyone. All right, we're outside with brown sugar sweet cream. This is where you're really going to see how light this color is. It is so light. I don't know why I had thought that it would be a little bit more brunette, but it's it's coming across fairly blonde. I mean, you've got a dark root here and you've got a little bit of darker tones, but they're very heavy handed on these blonde pieces, especially in the front. It really feels like a blonde with low lights. Make sure you guys get a good look at this color here. see it's pretty cloudy I'm just trying to get a sense of where the Sun is so that it at least hits it through the clouds at the right angle do you see how light it is yeah very very light so if you're a brunette and you were thinking this would be your gateway to lighter colors it may be too much of a leap for you in the beginning. It might be a great winter color for a blonde though. It's beautiful. I could wear this color no problem now, but two years ago before I was really able to get into the blondes, this would have been a no go for me. I wouldn't have been able to wear this at all. It would have been way too light. So I do wanna make sure my brunette wig sisters know it's quite light. All right, guys, I hope that helped you. Thank you so much for watching. Please like, subscribe, share, comment. All the things you do help the algorithm. So when people go searching for wig information, my, my videos will get recommended if YouTube sees them as valuable. If you don't do those things, then YouTube will think that you guys don't like what I have to put out there and then they won't recommend it. So if you get, if you get help, know someone else may need the help as well. Thanks for watching. I'll talk to you guys soon. Thank you.